<laughs> you hear me fine in my, in my yeah, headphones? Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So you're the first guest to, to bring notes with you really? as well. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate the notes. Wow. It means you're organized and you know yeah. what you want to you know what you want to touch on. Um, I'll note life. What is it? I said note life. Note life. Hashtag note life. <laughs> I'd, I, I'm, I'm too like my my thoughts are all over the place. If I don't write stuff down, there's no way I'm, I'm remembering half the shit that I'm supposed to. But that. you are DJ, event producer, collective founder, mental health advocate, and that's part of the reason why you're so tired today. Probably, when you yeah. came in, you're not giving yourself the time that you needed to sleep. Yeah, so. for sure, for sure. Luckily, I got a little bit of rest in before I nice. came up. So. Um, but yeah, one of the things that's really helped me a lot is actually practicing a lot of breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. So um, I wasn't aware of this until I watched this YouTube video, but there is a way to switch your nervous system from being parasympathetic, which is uh, basically your fight or flight. Right. Sort of like and that's kind of where you're at when you're anxious, you're breathing in your chest a lot, you're sort of... Um, you know, really getting stressed out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you have me. a lot of tension oh, yeah. all up here because you're breathing in your chest, you're always yeah. tense up here. And I watched this YouTube video and I was like, wow, this is amazing that you can actually change your physiology by um, breathing in if you breathe in for like four seconds, out for six seconds, for example. So it's like okay. basically breathing yeah, out longer than you're breathing in for. So okay. the time frame isn't necessarily as important, but it's like breathing out longer by like a few seconds. And it actually switches over the course of a few minutes, switches your nervous system from being a parasympathetic um, to sympathetic, I think parasympathetic to sympathetic or mm -hmm. sympathetic. Vice one, versa. Or one of the yeah. other, but yeah, it's essentially like taking it from fight or flight into like rest and relax. Huh. And it was uh, really remarkable for me because I started practicing these things right. after I saw this YouTube video and I was like, whoa, this is. You saw the difference. Yeah. Well, I mean, I felt the difference. Felt I just difference. kind of was like driving one day and I kind of realized like, wow, I just kind of feel okay. neutral. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. not stressed out about anything. I'm not anxious about anything. I'm not. You know, my mind's not constantly turning. I don't have the physical sensations mm. of like anxiety. And I'm like, wow, this is really remarkable. So I told myself, I'm going to tell everybody about this. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually one of the um, things I think I'm going to be submitting to festivals. I'm doing workshops for the Athena Collective. So nice. um, Breath Fist of Champions is what I might <laughs> end up calling it. <laughs> and That's it's just, rad. Yeah, yeah. Literally just going through and uh, teaching people some of these breathing techniques and then what it can do for you. Because yeah. for me, I've been someone that, um, um, I never really realized how much anxiety and sort of like being inside of my head a lot and overanalyzing things affected me yep. um, until I realized that it, it wasn't there. And I'm like, wow, I actually, this must be what, you know, a neurotypical person feels like and mm -hmm. just kind of existing, living in the present, you know, and I think it's like really important to uh, keep yourself focused sort of in the present moment because if you're time traveling, if you're thinking too much uh, about the future, you're anxious about the future or, you know, you're depressed about the past, you're regretting things, yeah. you know, and it really uh, detracts from your experience. It It's harder to be present with somebody and just be oh, in a conversation even with them. Like, you know, sometimes I'll be talking to somebody and they're like, are you like with me right yeah. now? And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. I was yeah. like totally just in my head trying yeah. to listen, but, <laughs> but yeah, <I'm> <laughs> yeah, like really wanting to, yeah, and like yeah, yeah. feeling bad and like just having my mind sort of go in like a different direction. So practicing these breathing techniques and, and just practicing kind of being present with people is yeah. something that's really really helped me a lot so. yeah breathing techniques have always it's been talked about and it's been proven time and time again that that's something is is very important because right. for for me specifically i'm someone who randomly i'll catch myself like holding my breath for no yeah. no reason whatsoever <laughs> and i'll just like exhale and then i feel like the anxiety and right. i feel a little bit more tense and i realize it's because my thoughts are on the future on the past on the present everything is happening at mm -hmm. once so it's like to, to be deliberate with your breathing and, and to kind of get your body in the habit of a rhythmic pattern of breathing is, mm -hmm. is really important. It's not something I've gotten down <laughs> yet. So I'm hoping after this, I'll I can kind of get some, YouTube yes, videos. please send yeah. it. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, what were you going to say? No, no, no. I was oh, just going to okay. say, I mean, the breathing is, is, is super <laughs> important and it's, 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 it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's easy to, to say like, Oh no, I'm good. I don't, I don't need it, but right. you're not in the moment. Right, that you right. kind of give yourself the anxiety and the tension in the neck and the shoulders and you're never you're never present with people especially with people that are in our industry because right. so much is happening all the time a lot of stimulation a lot of stimulation <laughs> so it's, it's hard, ha, like what do you think is is the key to let's say focusing on centering yourself from the bottom up kind of thing if, if mm -hmm. it's like you have to internalize it first that hey i need to kind of 
choose to do this over and over right. again cuz you're not going to just do it once right. after watching the YouTube video no. and then you got it down no, kind of thing. It's not going to do anything if you do it once. I actually just started using all of my free time um, you know, like if I'm in the car, for yeah. example, you know, if I'm just like sitting in like watching a show or something um, to just kind of put one hand on my stomach and one hand on my chest and just sort of like practicing. It. Is it my stomach that's rising and falling or my chest, oh. you know, just and that's casually, and, yeah, just not kind like, of like actually trying to do something. Yet. Yeah, just kind of like literally like driving, like I'll be driving and I'll have like one hand yeah. on my stomach yeah. and be like, am I actually breathing through oh. my stomach? Because I've naturally been a chest breather my like entire life pretty much. Same. And it contributes, you know, kind of to those like anxious feelings. And it's a lot easier to stop a snowball of, you know, thoughts like anxiety or anxious thoughts it's a lot easier to stop that like right in the beginning of course rather than like when in the snow trying yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. exactly so i think one of the biggest things other than actually practicing the breathing techniques like on a regular basis just throughout your mm -hmm. day because it, it makes it easier to bring it up when you are under kind of a stressful situation when you've mm -hmm. been practicing it like, yeah non-stop you know it's if easier you only, to call it exactly yeah. exactly so I think one of the other most important things is um, just really being like extremely self-aware and really kind of just physically and mentally like I would realize, oh, wow, like my heart's beating kind of faster right now. Or like I would think about something and my heart would start beating or like I'd feel like this like rock in my stomach. And before like I wouldn't really do anything about it I would just kind of like feed into yeah. it and then uh, that's when you know things start going downhill really fast yeah. <laughs> but um when I, I immediately had that uh kind of response like I would feel the physical sensation and then I'd be like all right breathing let's in. focus yeah I'm breathing out let's just focus on the breathing mm -hmm. and being able to um you know put an immediate stop to the physical sensations and also just actually counting and not like thinking but just counting right. my breaths was something that kind of was able to, um, you know, immediately like shift things. And now like, it's a lot easier for me when I have, you know, those moments, which are much, you know, f more few and far between, right, like right, right. it went from like several times a day and me just thinking, Oh, this is just normal. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> yeah. And like several times a day to like maybe like a few times a week where like maybe I'll have like a moment like that, but it's because I'm also, I think it's because I'm practicing breathing like that all the time so I'm not um, enabling myself to kind of um, just accidentally fall back mm -hmm. into the old pattern but um, but yeah it's kind of funny because I was never really super into like yoga like I would do yoga poses and everything right. and with starting the techno yoga club event like last year that I started everybody's been asking like when are we gonna do it again yeah. like you know I've had a few friends come up to me and just like people are really just encouraging because everybody really enjoyed it yeah. you know and I'm really excited that now I'm kind of so on board with this breath work stuff yeah. because it really kind of goes hand in hand and one of my biggest struggles over the past um you know I guess forever, honestly, right. is it's like, I've always had so many projects. Like my hands are always in like so many different pots and it's exhausting. You know, sometimes I know, you know, how it is story of sure. my life. And it's story like, of my fucking life. <laughs> so a lot of us creative folk yeah. are, we want to do everything. You yeah. know? So what I've been trying to work out with myself is really kind of dissecting like, okay, what are my missions and like all of these mm -hmm, projects? Mm -hmm. What am I trying to accomplish and how can I kind of integrate all of those things? Yes. So, you know, like the breathing workshops could go with the techno yoga stuff, like the Athena collective panels also, you know, kind of support like bringing more women into the music industry that, and I feel like the feminine industry is really, or feminine uh, energy is really needed and necessary to kind of do you think that's, balance it do out. Do you think that more. it's lacking? Um, I mean, from a perspective of like, if you look at how many uh, men there are in the industry that are still DJing when they're like in their forties, like, right, you know, like fifties, right. Carl Cox, Lee Burridge, you know, people like that. There's a lot less women. I mean, other than, I mean, I'm not sure how, um, what, what age Annie Mack is or, you right. know, my, I mean, my Jane Cole, she's really young too. She's yeah. like our age. Yeah. You know, I don't Black really Madonna. can't think. Yeah. She's a, you know, a little bit uh, more mature as well, but, um, I don't necessarily, think it's lacking because the women are out there but i think that it's a lot more common to you know see men on festival right, lineups right, like right. a full lineup or like you know you go to a party like how often do you go to a party and there's actual like actually like an equal representation representation of like, men Not and women. It's like 
not, not as, as frequently, frequently as you should. No, no. And that's something that I want to kind of encourage. Yeah. Abs- more. And, and I love the fact that you're doing it and you're doing it with the Athena club. And I mean, Athena itself is, you know, goddess of wisdom, courage, um, inspiration. Right. And that is obviously the crux of what you're trying to do with the community totally. that you're trying to build with, with the Athena collective. So it sounds 100%. like you're looking for like a symbiotic relationship of everything so that one isn't necessarily independent from the other. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like, there is kind of, a, you know, there's the argument of, okay, well, if you're doing, you know, more events like tra- catering towards women or like, you know, you're trying to have more like a lineup, like maybe of all women, for example, okay. like, isn't that like segregating like the genders more? And like, there's kind of like people playing that side of the coin. And I'm like, yo, listen, like yeah. the fact of the matter is over the course of our history, like as a society and, you know, at least recently as like, you know, a civilization, Men have definitely, you know, held the the talking stick a lot more sure. than women. You know, whether that's, um, you know, in government, in, um, you know, corporations and everything. There's like the fact that, uh, what is it? I think there's more CEOs named John than there are women CEOs, like in general. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. If you that's Google, insane. if you Google that, it's like something like that. Yeah. So, so yeah. So for me, you know, with doing stuff with the Athena Collective, um, our whole mission, you know, is to connect, empower, and inspire women in the music industry, but really kind of everyone, just to right. kind of say like, hey, you know, it's not about um, putting any gender or sexual identity or gender identity on like a pedestal. It's really just kind of about like shifting the scales a little bit yeah. and sort of just bringing more balance to, um, you know, what's already kind of going on right now. I think that's fair. I mean, it's fair for you to, to, to kind of give your own platform for, you know, helping that balance kind of, right? kind of shift itself. Cause I, it's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, obviously like the gender disparity between male and female is, is his, it's history, you know right. I mean? It's, it's, right. it's her, her story, history, how, whatever you, if we are going to be doing that, <laughs> no, but I mean, um, like, I'm not that hard. Yeah. But if you want, <laughs> if you want to get there, but I think in our scene specifically, how long have you been doing, how long have you been involved in the scene? Did you start off DJing? Um, Sorry well, to like backtrack no, it's okay. a little bit. Yeah. But. So, I mean, in music in general, um, when I was like 16, 15, 16, I started going to like undergrounds, but they were like in like the, um, post-punk kind of Mm. like hardcore like metal scenes and stuff in on the east coast and um i started off as you know a photographer so i was you know taking photos i was going on tour you know with bands to document their experience right and you know the really it was just kind of like oh wow this is really awesome i get to like go backstage and like photograph and i was like backstage at like a vfw or something but it still felt cool (laughs) you know um but i really just kind of like documenting people's experiences (laughs) and then you know, eventually it kind of um, led to me uh, photographing for Mad Decent. So Mad Decent Philly, like it's Diplo's block party mm-hmm, and initially mm-hmm. started in Philly. Uh, they had a, collect- a collective of DJs and they would do parties. It was mainly like a lot more kind of like trappy. Kind right. of stuff. So it was like to a little bit different of a genre. Um, but it got me going into like Philly warehouse parties. And I was going to these warehouse parties and eventually I was like, you know, finding my way into like techno and house right, parties right. and stuff. And I'm like... Yeah, slow integration yeah. yeah and i'm like watching people djing and just kept like kind of like hopping mm-hmm. back behind mm-hmm. the decks and watching people and one day somebody was like yo like who are you like <laughs> i see you back here all the time yeah. like i never see you on the dance floor and i'm like oh you know i'm just watching what they're doing and that kind of like planted a seed and um when i was moving from philly to la about like six years ago it was like 2014 or so i um had just started djing and i was okay. like wow this is a really interesting because you know, on the East Coast, it's like I was like totally like a noob, like people knew that I just was getting started, you know, but mm-hmm. on the West Coast, I kind of was coming into being here like as like, right. a DJ. Right. So I had asked some of my East Coast friends, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm moving to the West Coast. Like, I'd really love to find like more women to just like kick it with and play music. Yeah. And, like, so you, you came you know, into it automatically looking for like, hey, I'm looking for women to, to come. Right. right. So this isn't something that's brand new for you. This isn't something that you've just like recently decided that you want to kind of bring to the industry right Right. no it's been going on for a hot minute and it just really started with like a facebook group of you know hey like all of my girlfriends on the east coast add any women on the west coast that you know the dj and then like you know it kind of just starting to like build like here and there and then i remember i was at desert hearts it was uh i think my first desert hearts like in like november and Mm -hmm. i had like just started this like whole thing like a couple months ago and i was like there talking and i think i was actually talking to like dink or something like uh when i first met him and you know, he had like heard of it already. And I was like, well, I'm like, this is cool. Really? And it just kind <laughs> of like, started how? to sort of like, yeah, it just sort of started to sort of snowball. And now yeah. there's like yeah, about, yeah. um, about 300 members in the Facebook group. We actually have a hundred registered around a hundred or so registered members, like across like the awesome. country and like the, uh, abroad as well. So the whole, 
concept is, you know, you become a member and then it's literally a network to connect, empower and inspire, um, you know, women or w women identifying individuals yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. in the music industry. So um, the idea is once you're a member, I share the database with you. And then if you are deciding like, hey, I want to travel to, you know, like London, Ibiza and Amsterdam or, you know, New York, like in Philly, yeah. and I book some gigs, but I don't know anybody there then hey the here's network. the collective yeah here's the network like maybe they can get you a gig maybe they're just telling you about a club or a party you should yeah. go to you know but the whole idea is just like we're you know more powerful together so like let's Absolutely. use our hive mind and you know help each I other love out, it but. I love that yeah and that's again from from just being myself as someone who kind of likes to overfill his plate with stuff and just right. do too much that's something that's innate in a person of okay course. so I've I've always known that I've always been the person to do multiple things. So mm -hmm. for you starting in, in music and you came in here and the first thing you did was start a Facebook group. You did something that was not for yourself. Right. right. You know, so how, where, where did it all kind of, how, how long have you been kind of putting mm -hmm. yourself before you found your, your, your right. stability in like the industry in the dance music industry? Yeah. Yeah. Like how long have I kind of been putting my, myself out there personally yeah. or yeah, everything? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like it kind of comes with um, doing projects like the Athena Collective. Like one of the things that I started doing right when I first um, kind of got here and, and started it is I was uh, contacted by a production school actually in Glendale called uh, Beat Lab Academy. Yeah. yeah. So this guy, Yuda, uh, owns it and he's awesome. He's like, you know, become like a, a good friend. I don't see him as much anymore, but because I live in OC now, but right. um, we started it. hosting women's Ableton production workshops. Nice. So like the first one was so cool, like walking in, there was standing room only. Girls were like standing on their laptops, like holding them and, you know, just learning how to use Ableton for the first time. Yeah. And um, we just did those for free. Just like to That's kind of awesome. encourage um so that and then when I think one of the biggest sort of turning points that kind of helped me kind of establish myself like internally yeah. because before I'm putting That's myself important. out there to other people it's like you have to kind of like feel like okay this is like the move like right. it's like you have to kind of shed your shed the imposter syndrome if you will right. and I still struggle Absolutely. with that all the time I mean I think it's really common yeah for, we everybody can does touch on that a little bit yeah. like in a second but yeah. um when I had uh, first kind of gotten into like the the burning man scene I had ended up going like actually my first camping festival was an event called freeform and okay. um it was at my partner at the time he was kind of managing that event and uh they didn't have anybody to like work their gate so i had never mm. like worked festival i've never volunteered i've never been to a festival but you know i was like oh well like i'll help out and you know like i kind of like got up there and i just sort of there wasn't actually a gate coordinator because sure. they actually had moved to become a producer to fill another spot that was Oof. left from someone. So, you know, I just kind of got into like strategy mode. Like how can we make this efficient? How can we make people's experience? It's like, we are the first people mm -hmm. that these mm -hmm. attendees, these guests and participants are interacting with. So like, how That's can true. we make this like the best vibe, you know, and, um, kind of being in that position, they, they really noticed that and they're like, we want to bring you on as a producer. So I produced that event for several years and it's just something that really taught me a lot about like problem solving, becoming confident right. with myself, like how events work. I mean, it was a four day camping festival between like 800 and 1200 people. And like, you know, the first year after I was doing it, I was like on a team of, um, it was like five other producers. Yeah. So it was kind of like, I didn't really like looking back on it. I'm kind of like, wow, there was like so many logistics. It was six months of meetings for yeah. two hours, at least a week plus like 10 hours or so. And I'm like, I did all of it for free. Like none of us right. got paid right. and everything, but it really kind of, um, to kind of get back to your, your initial question on like how long and how have I like been putting myself out there? Um, just by doing stuff like that, like I've actually struggled more. Um, it's something that I'm trying to still get totally comfortable with. I've struggled a lot more with just putting myself out there individually okay. versus working saying. on a group project right. or doing something for representing the community. a brand or yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like whether, yeah, exactly. Whether I'm like, you know, was working for a band, you know, promoting their album. I, like one of the bands I went on tour with, I was like literally hustling CDs in like yeah. warp tour lines Sick. for like, <laughs> yeah, we went on, we followed warp tour yeah. and that was like how nope. I was making my money yeah we followed, followed the warp tour and then we smart. would hit up the lines we would go with oh, headphones wow. we'd have headphones and an ipod Sick. and we'd be like hey like you know what bands do you like oh that's kind of like this one listen to this oh do you want to buy the cd 10 bucks and like i would make 50 they gave me 50 percent dude it was they I've were they were smart that. guys hot yeah, yeah. hot spur was their name i don't i don't know if they're still doing music but some of them actually live in, in cali now yeah. but um but yeah like by doing things for other people it was a lot easier for me to work my ass off for yeah. somebody else yeah, when i felt course. like i was helping someone and right. i felt sort of like 
you know, I really thrived on that external appreciation and validation. And, you know, now I'm kind of starting to realize like how important it is to be able to have that validation and appreciation coming from yourself Absolutely. internally. Absolutely. And, um, it's really powerful. It's really powerful when you're like, wow, like I can put myself out there and not feel like I am, you know, full of myself mm -hmm. or like conceited. And I kind of like, it's just sort of stuff I grew up with. It's like, that's the when, when that's people, imposter syndrome. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, imposter yeah, yeah. syndrome for sure. And it's like, you know, why do I feel so comfortable like promoting somebody else's project or work or, you know, even another individual, but why is it so hard for me to like do it for myself? You know what I think it is. I think this is, it's just super common for most people is, Obviously, I mean, you're 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 born and raised to to know that you got to get a good career, you got to work, you got to right. do anything. But it's not so much like an entrepreneurial mindset. You're just thinking of like, okay, I'm gonna work for a brand, I'm gonna work right. for a company, I want to represent someone else that already has everything flowing, and right. I'm just gonna come in and help make it more efficient. I'm right. gonna make it more money. I'm gonna make it cut costs. Whatever you can do to help somebody else out. Exactly. So I don't think it's necessarily like a weight that you should hold on your shoulders that you feel For this way sure. because I, I can totally <laughs> tell that it is, but it's, 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 it, I think it's a common thing for, for, for people to feel like they're putting in 110% easy because they're behind the shade. Right. So lifting right. it and then putting yourself out there is always going to be scary. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just sort of like, Oh, like are people going to think that I'm, you know, full of myself yeah. for wanting to like promote myself as like an artist. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm really inspired by, I mean, Lauren Mia for one of mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's somebody and like uh, Alyssa to Mary Droppins. Um, and then another woman that I'm actually, um, kind of managing some of her music marketing and like promotion yeah. stuff. Her name's Oriel pool. Oh, yeah. And, you know, they're kind of like three women off the top of my head that like, you know, they are just constantly putting themselves out there, constantly crushing yeah. it. And, um, you know, like it, people, people notice that, you know, and it's Absolutely. just like, they're not like afraid of feeling, you know, like, oh, me working on my own personal project is like going to make everybody think that like, I'm, I'm, full. Yeah, I'm full. Yeah, exactly. Myself. Exactly. Yeah. And it's sort of, sort of shedding this like long running feeling from when I was like a kid of like, you know, that's sort of like how my mom would react sometimes right. like, Oh, like that woman thinks she's so cool, you know, mm -hmm. whatever kind of like thing. And I'm like, well, like, yeah, why can't she just be like confident in yeah. herself? And that should be awesome. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah, yeah. You know? But, um, but yeah, that's tough. That, that's, a, that, that's, that's a never ending story of, of people that are going to feel like they, they see someone else and that that person is doing well for themselves and mm -hmm. they're putting out, they're putting themselves out there. But the person that's seeing it doesn't kind of understand right. the perspective of the other person because they've never done it themselves. Exactly. So it's easy for you, for you to, to look at someone and be like, you know, fuck yeah, someone's putting themselves out there. Good for her. But for someone that's just coming into the industry and they, they see someone that posts about themselves all the time, you're going to think like, oh, well, right. you know, right. the for level sure. of. It's self promotions everything. I mean, you could be the best artist in the world, but if you're not actually like marketing yourself or promoting yourself, and a lot of times you have to do that yourself. Of course. In the beginning at least. And you know, if you're not putting yourself out there, then you know, you're never gonna be like successful. Yeah. It's already hard enough, you know, mentally, like as an artist, because you know, typically as an artist you're very critical of yourself. Usually you're you're always your own worst critic. I mean, like mm -hmm. from mo mm -hmm. more nine times out of ten, I would say. But, um, you know, one of the challenging things is you're automatically in an environment where, you know, more so necessarily than maybe like other industries or other, um, you know, businesses where maybe you're working on a team, like okay. you're constantly putting like your work out there to be evaluated. You mean like in the dance music industry? Just like in, yeah, as a, as a musical as artist, a musical as a fine artist, you know, it's like you're displaying your work and it's like, all right, you know, like it or no, don't yeah, like it, yeah. you know? But if people don't like it, you're like, shit, I suck. Right. Like, oh my God, I should just quit. Like, That's the art. You know what I mean? That's but it's arts. like you have to be resilient. And yeah. I think part of that resiliency is Listen. coming from the self. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're fucking of, right. You have to be coming from resilient. like yeah. the uh, self awareness right. and then just like that internal feeling of like security and getting what you need, sort of from yourself. Because if you're constantly trying to seek, you know, validation, appreciation, um, you know, obviously support is nice. Um, but like right. if, when you're constantly trying to seek that stuff out from other people, when you're working on something and you know, maybe some of the greatest ideas in the world or greatest books or greatest art that's created in the beginning, it wasn't supported by anyone. Correct. And if that Absolutely. person didn't just keep pushing, you know, like JK Rowling or something, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. you know, just like turn down publishing house for publishing house. If you don't keep pushing for your art, then like you're not going to and make it. And we would it. have no Harry Potter. I know. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's real. It's, it's, I, I think people, need to, to, to be okay with 
being uncomfortable. And I right. think a lot of people aren't. And I think for, for you, because you have such a strong inner inner voice, I guess you could say, like you, you have the drive that you know that this is going to be uncomfortable. Right. So right, right. Ha- is it something that you, you trained yourself to kind of just put it out there and whether or not, <laughs> whether or not people like it, that, yeah, no, it's definitely something that I would say it, it, it kind of, I feel like comes naturally, like from like my like soul, right, like, you know, right. it comes naturally in That's a way, but are. it's not something that like has ever been easy. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's like something that I've always felt was like inside of me, but, um, not something that is just second nature. Second nature. It comes naturally, but it's not second nature. I don't know. That makes like sense. Kind of no, that makes sense. But, um, but yeah, it's something that I had to kind of like train myself to do to be more comfortable with. And, you know, part of it was just kind of like fighting, you know, that inner anxiety, mm-hmm, that inner self-critic, mm-hmm. that limited character. Um, one of the other workshop ideas for a festival that, you know, pretty much actually every festival that I submit to, I'm just going to kind of submit several, several ideas. Options. That's what I did yeah. for Desert Hearts last year is I submitted like four or five ideas and then they picked the panel. So I went with like this like women's panel. But I'm one of the things, oh uh, yeah, one yeah. of the things that I uh, want to do for this year is uh, doing a workshop called, um, what is it, Discovering Your Radical Hero and Defeating Your Inner Villain. So kind of like, nice, okay, your accurate. radical hero, you know, is like kind of like your soul side of yourself. Like this is like the truest version, you know, of yourself. And then, you know, your limited character or your um, your inner villain, you know, that's like the voice in your head that's like just talking shit on you mm-hmm, the whole time. Mm-hmm. And it's just like really important to be able to kind of make that distinction and separation because when you're constantly operating from a space of like, that negative self-talk is going on all the time and you're not like stepping in and being like okay wait a second like let me see why why do i feel this way yeah. like what is and try to kind of in- investigate and like have curiosity about it you know so we, we, just because on that point because right. I, I i i strongly agree with you but do you think it's tougher for for someone to internalize the fact that they have these negative thoughts because when you're thinking in your own head and let's say you're thinking out loud, people just feel like I'm the only person that can hear all this shit mm-hmm. because it's them thinking about themselves and their own life situation right. and scenario and everything. So no one is going to think, no one's going to understand what you're thinking about right. yourself. Right. Exactly. So exactly. what is like, what is that difference maker for someone mm-hmm. that's just internalizing like the shitty thoughts all the time and they're, they're stressing themselves right. out and they're giving them th- themselves the anxiety. What's the best way to kind of like catch yourself that you right. in your experience okay okay yeah um well i think one of the things is um you know again obviously like the self-awareness but you know we all have moments um i mean i would say ideally hopefully most of us anyway where yeah. you know you have good moments right. you have right, moments right, right. where you're like hey i'm killing it right now yeah. or you feel confident or you you know are proud of yourself mm-hmm. and it's um kind of just trying to recognize like all right you know what what causes these feelings like the positive ones and then when you have sort of the more negative self-talk like for me I mean now that I've, I've learned to kind of like distinguish you know the shitty it's it's honestly it starts to be kind of become kind of easy because when you're constantly talking down to yourself you're like all right like I'm being really hard on myself yeah. right now and yeah. like this really isn't that bad or if somebody gives you a compliment and you're like no like and you kind of argue with yeah. them or something yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. um but it is, it is really a challenge. And now I kind of, I feel like just notice it because those feelings usually come with like the physical sensations of like, you know, feeling anxious mm-hmm. or just like, you know, kind of feeling um, like burnout and stuff. Um, but I think one of the things that actually, okay, so this is actually something I wanted to touch on anyway, yeah. but um, I think one of the most important things is uh, being able to like, meet your negativity like meet your anxiety Mm. kind of because there's this whole sort of like school of thought now like toxic spirituality or toxic positivity is kind of like what people are kind of people of what people are calling it and Mm. it's like you know this frame of thought of like you know people giving advice of like oh just be positive oh don't think about the negative oh don't focus on that but it's like no you actually like life is not all like you know good vibes like sometimes you have have to deal with some serious struggles and and, and shit you have to to go through it and I think when it's like you're just told to like shut all all those feelings and like ignore them you're not ever going to know what something is until you go up and you look it in the face you know that's the whole thing with like facing your fears so to speak if you're going to do it physically you can face face your fears fears internally yeah Yeah, not a lot of people i mean everyone everyone can do it everyone can you know face yourself and your inner demons and and everybody has 
skeletons in the closet. Everybody has inner demons that they're working with. So it's not like it's something completely, you know, a, a revolutionary idea for something to do. But I agree sure. with you that for someone to say, like, don't don't worry about that or don't think about this. Think about the positive. Like, that's counterintuitive. Like, the negative thoughts that you're having and, and the, the, the shitty energy that you're kind of feeding right. yourself is something you need to, to look at and say, what is it about this? And kind of retrace your footsteps, so to speak, or, like, find the 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 core of what is actually exactly. bothering you. That's how you're going to overcome it. Exactly. Otherwise, you're just masking it and you're putting shit under yeah. the rug and it's still going to be there. It's not It's not a good feeling, too, because that's going to come back up at yeah, some point with you, does. you know? And I actually kind of, um, you know, I sort of started this visualization process where it's kind of a, you know, kind of like a little, a bit of a meditative process is when, when I'm feeling like a, a bit anxious, it's, you know, I'm in... Everybody should have like your, you know, your, your happy place, happy if place. you will, like your place yeah. that you can go to. And it's like, that's, it's really great for, you know, visualizing and meditating, like, okay, you know, where can I go where I feel completely at peace? And I kind of uh, started doing this visualization where when I started to have some type of like anxiety or negative self-talk or something pop up, it would be kind of almost like this, like literally like what I envision my, you know, limited character or inner mm. villain to like look like. It's like this like Sick. weird, crazy, like seven foot tall, like, <laughs> all a bunch of scribbles, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, just like literally something that like a kid would draw, right. like, like the boogeyman yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it's like invading like this, like area of calmness that I have. And, hmm. um, it's like interesting because all of my, um, all of my dreams, like when I lucid dream a lot, like a lot of my like bad dreams are about running away from something, you know? So then eventually I was like, okay, what if instead of running away from these feelings, I just literally like went up to them and like, I like the whole visualization is like my radical hero goes up to mm -hmm. like my inner villain and is just like, I love you. I forgive you. I'm sorry. And just hugs it. Yeah. And then like in my visualization, it's like all of this external, like monster skin, like kind of yeah, comes off, off, you know, yeah. and it's just like a scared crying little girl underneath. Right. And like, that's where, when you look at kind of these, uh, negative feelings that you're having about yourself, it's really like, ultimately for a lot of people, it's just a feeling of like not feeling worthy, not feeling like appreciated or loved. Right. And it's like, even if you are by so many people around you, I mean, I have such amazing friends and like, you know, an amazing partner who, you know, supports me like through thick and thin. And it's, it's hard sometimes to kind of, you almost feel guilty for feeling right. the way you feel. Cause you're like, I'm so lucky to have so many people that care about me. Like, why do I feel this way? And it, mm. it just kind of makes it even even worse and just sort of realizing that like, Hey, everybody has these feelings. It's not about like being upset that you have them. It's about what you're going to do with the information, you know, yep. that you learn, that you learn about yourself. Like from not a lot of people think like that. that, that, that's, that's you though. That, that, <laughs> that's that, that, what that's I'm one trying of those to put out yeah, there to yeah, people. Yeah, no, that's why I'm great. doing this stuff. Exactly. It's like, it's important. And that's, it's, it's, it's important. And I think it, it takes someone who kind of has taken the first steps already internally. Like you've already been through, the the beginning parts of what you're trying to get to someone who's starting to get there as well right. you know so for you were saying you you lucid dream a lot yeah okay talk to me about that because oh, i've always shit. been i've always been a fan of that i'm not too exactly familiar that's what All that's right, let dreaming. me check the time Let's here see. Make sure. what time did we start? oh we got time we got nothing but time cool, cool, cool. yeah yeah so uh, lucid dreaming to my understanding is dreaming while you're awake ish um it's actually like well it's you're still in it's, a dream but it's actually realizing that you're in a dream when you're in a dream oh, so I've you're completely in a dream yeah you know, and it's something that I've literally, I don't really know like how, it's just something I've done since I was like a kid. Yeah. It doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes m dreams are more lucid than others. But I, uh, recently, a couple months ago, I was camping with my dad and um, I feel like it definitely has something to do with even just being like sleeping like right on the ground and like, you sure. know, kind of just like being Earth. like connected yeah. in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But I had one of the ins most insane like lucid dream experiences. They literally felt as real as like you and I just sitting here. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, kind of in this space. I, I think it was like at a venue or something. I don't even remember what the dream itself was about, but I just remember being like, oh, where is this place? Like, I haven't been here before. But then I was like, oh, shit, I'm in a dream because everything started kind of like Inception. Right. Like, everything started to shimmer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of, and started to kind of, like, start to break away and disintegrate. And I was like, holy shit, I'm in a dream right now. And then I That's just wild. kind of, like, started because I've been researching lucid dreaming and reading about it literally since I was, like, 13. I'm, like, 31 now. So it's, like, been a really long-running <laughs> yeah. amount of time that I've yeah. been looking into this stuff. I was like, 
you know, on like the, the interwebs, like yeah. back in, like even in middle school, like looking this stuff up. And it, and and it grows into your self-conscious. Like yeah. the fact that you've been doing it since you were 13 and, and looking into it, your brain kind of knows what to look for. Your exactly. brain understands the signs of the fact that you're in fact having a lucid dream. Exactly. Yeah. And there's certain things that you can do when you're in a lucid dream, like, or when you realize that you're dreaming to kind of stay sort of in the dream. And like, there's techniques basically. So like your dream self, if you're like starting to, you start to spin is one thing. Some, some people mm. like to spin around in a circle that doesn't actually help me stay in the dream that kind of like distracts me for me when I realize I'm dreaming and I start to you kind of start to feel yourself being pulled out of the dream and back into you know your body almost oh, like, like when you're, you're starting almost waking to, up exactly like all start to like just focus like intently like it's like I'll look at like the curtains I'm like okay like let's focus on all of the you know wrinkles and the right, curtains or right, just right. I'll just try to like look at something and find as much detail as I possibly can so and you just don't go ground. back out exactly because it's like I'm in a fucking lucid dream I want to like fly and stuff so that's what I like that's <laughs> yeah. what I do I'll just be like let's fly let's like that's you know change sick. the environment it, it is but it's, how is it that awesome. so what is that point where like how, how have you been able to kind of like get to the point where you're like I'm in a dream like because right. there's once you're in a lucid right. dream and you realize that you're in the dream that yeah. you're like okay now I can either control it and, and do what I want with right, the dream so right. to speak or go so back how do to you the, actually realize so where is that like yeah. yeah well what's the is it like a thinking right. thing is it you're training I mean, your brain to do there's something there's a few things where it's like I mean it's good to kind of think about this stuff when you are actually awake so like just right. like you know exactly. the breathing techniques it's easier to call on when, when yeah. you kind of need it but um, there's a really great film I highly recommend it, it's called Waking Life Waking Life it's okay. yeah it's this guy that. Richard Linklater it's actually the same guy that wrote um, and directed Dazed and Confused uh, if you've ever seen uh, that yes, and it's it's a rotoscope animation so if you've ever heard of, you've probably heard of A Scanner Darkly yeah. which is like yeah, you yeah. know also a rotoscope animation and um, it's like live action but it's filmed kind of like uh, it's filmed like an animation so every mm. scene is a different dream sequence but in it like one of the uh, the main characters the whole premise of the movie is he keeps waking up into another dream but he doesn't realize that he's Good actually dreaming God. at first and he's like what is going on? That's inception. Like, you know, exactly, yeah. exactly. Are you in the exactly. fucking dream or are you out? Right, That's right. Terrifying. So it's kind of realizing that, um, but this movie is actually, it's like not a horror movie. It's actually very <laughs> no, enlightening. Yeah. It's very enlightening. Yeah. And it really talks a lot about like simultaneous consciousness and like, mm. you know, collective consciousness. Like where do our ideas come from? Like when you're in a dream and you get an idea from some dream character and you're like, I've never thought of yeah. this before. Yeah, like yeah, where yeah. did this come from? You know? Um, so it's really interesting. But some of the techniques that, that they mention in there is, you know, like turning a light switch on and off. If you have like a moment where you're like, wait, am I dreaming right now it's like if you turn a light switch on and off it's not going to do anything in your dream like okay. that's like I mean that's what I've experienced and that's what like they, they say you know and then another thing is um, like reading really small print you know in, just like in the dream, in the dream if yeah. you're reading really small print and you can't really like read it or it's like kind of like wavy you know either you're on acid or like you're in a dream you know <laughs> same thing right. with like being on like a, a phone like or a digital device like a if you look at a digital clock it's not going to like appear normal you know what i mean Interesting. so it's like if you learn you know the things to notice right. and you're making right, those right. observations and you're just like in a moment where it's like feels like reality but then like you look over and like you know the clock is sort of like wavy kind of like you're like yeah, what's some, going that's it's not like right. weird and then you kind of realize like oh shit I'm in a dream and then you try to like practice yeah. whatever you kind of stay in it and it's cool because you can honestly like I mean I like of saying like I usually like, like to just uh, it's a bit more recreational for me yeah. a lot of times it's like you know I'll get to fly or you know I'll just sort of um, interact with different dream characters and you learn a lot about yourself too and that that one dream actually that I was telling you about when I was camping um, it kind of like ended up leading into another like I was in this venue and then it led into this other part of the dream and I don't really remember exactly what happened but it was it was during a period of time where um, I'm not going to go too much into the personal details but I was like going through something like really really challenging sure. at that time and in my dream I kept like asking like I don't remember what mm. I was doing but I kept asking like the other dream characters I was like is this like a test? Like, you know, what are you trying about to teach the real me world situation. about the real world okay. situation? Okay. Okay. Like, what are you trying to teach me? And I was like, really like just bent out of shape over this stuff, like yeah. the night before. And then like, I woke mm. up and I honestly just like felt like completely at peace. And I'm like, this is so weird. Like, I don't remember what happened, yeah. but it's like definitely somehow subconsciously helped me process something, you know, you got to internalize it without pretty much realizing that you were sitting down and having that conversation with yourself about it. Exactly. Because I think most of the time when people ha want to have that conversation, there's nothing talking back. Right. So you feel like, why do I feel this way? Why is this person treating me like shit? What am right. I missing about all right. this? So when you're able to, to kind of harness your, your inner thoughts and have yourself talk back to yourself, right. it sounds like it, that's probably what made the, the sense of relief when you woke yeah, up. Yeah, man. I mean, it was a lot of just, um, you know, like internal kind of dialogue and, yeah. and, 
you know, negative self-talk like the night before and sort of just like thinking like, this is not how I want to live my life. You can't live like a full life when you're constantly like up here. You can't be present with people. You know, Absolutely. You can't, you can't enjoy things. And I think it, it's, uh, it's super important. And that's kind of one of the things that I've always admired so much, you know, about Jarrell. Like he's able to be in, he was episode what, like nine or something. I don't remember. Yes. But something like that. Early on. Shout um, out Jarrell. Early on. Yeah, the shout homie. out to Jarrell. Yeah. <laughs> um, wearing my Boom Boom Room yeah. shirt. Yeah, wrapping. Which we're going to get into rapping. as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but like one of the things that I've appreciated so much about him is he is um you know he's just kind of like a very generally like centered sort of mm -hmm. like person and he's just kind of very um very relaxed and it's kind of been it's pretty balancing to just sort of be around somebody that and, and he's been through a lot of like self-development courses right. and his parents oh, okay. were okay. as well you know his parents have also kind of been on that tip like before he was so even really born it, yeah. so yeah exactly exactly and when you're kind of brought up with that type of toolkit you know it enables you to interact with the world in a much different way than someone that you know you know for example my parents were amazing and like they've always supported me but what I noticed and what I picked up as a kid was how they actually were treating themselves, mm. you know, like the negative self talk that they had to their kids and kids are sponges. I mean, yeah. like you like yeah, pick yeah, yeah. up a lot. So, you know, I noticed how they talk to themselves, like, you know, like they feeling down about themselves or feeling like it's their fault that something happened mm -hmm, or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. like whatever situation it was. I mean, you could go on and on about it, but that's the type of stuff that I picked up. And then I think that's kind of why I've had sort of this like naturally, but not second nature sort right, of like totally. aspect of it because like, you know, it's like I'm I am confident like most of the time, but like doesn't change the fact that I do have to fight like right. every day the struggle of the mental battleground in my head, like for sure. Um, but it sounds like you have you have the upper hand. Now, I, after I think after so now, a lot yeah. of training, after a lot of, of self talk and, and re and right. internalizing a lot of things, right. it does there is a breaking point is for is, sure. is is what I'm gathering from all this is that the fact that I mean, it, it's it, look. I mean, to everybody that's listening, whether you're watching or actually listening on thing, it's it's not easy. I mean, life is not fucking easy, and it's it's hard for everybody in their own way. Some people might have it easier than others, but even the people that, in some way or another, have it easier, they have things harder. Right. You know, like some people are very like outwardly positive and outwardly right. happy, but those sometimes are the people that are having the biggest demons that they have to like fight. Robin Williams, for example. Robin Williams, oh, uh, yeah, Heath just, Ledger. Yeah. There's, there's a lot. I mean, history, lot history just, it, it, it speaks to that. Yeah. You know? So no, to sure. have someone like Jarrell, who's, who's, I mean, he, it, it, the boom, boom room and, and him came out of nowhere. Oh yeah. For, for oh, yeah. me, Dude, came out of nowhere. It was came not out of nowhere for me yeah. too. I mean, I've been producing events for years and yeah. like, you know, my boyfriend is like, Oh, I'm going to start doing these parties. And I'm like, okay, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm here if you need me. Like, let me know. Like, Jarell, you know, you yeah, Jarell. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. You guys were together before the Boom Boom Room, even. Like, um, yeah. I mean, he ish. had like the Boom Boom Room. Like his his room at the warehouse was like the Boom Boom Room. Yeah. It was like decked out with like he could like control the lights on his yeah. phone and like do all this cool Same. shit and stuff. And um, it was meant to be. Yeah, we started yeah. doing a party. Uh, like a friend of mine had like invited us out to like DJ and we like you know promoted it and everything. And he was like, oh, That's you right, know, I think DJs that we too. can do this. Yeah. I think we can do this. Yeah, I th actually, he's supposed to be DJing the next. Oh shit! He's supposed to be like actually DJing um, the next event. Hopefully, he actually does. Cause yeah. it's, it's hard for him to focus on. Of music course, anyways. but um, I can't even. I can't <laughs> even imagine. I, I, my part, my business partner and I, we just we just host and we let everybody else. Right. We book the artists and stuff. Right. But I mean, it speaks volumes to, to him and to you because I want to yeah. keep. I mean, I want to keep the focus oh, as much yeah, as we yeah, can no, on you for because sure, for sure. He, he, having that support system and having someone that you can kind of see the balance right, right. Is, is helped you internalize. Oh, 100%. You know? 100%. And, and it's um, something that's kind of just helped me um, just realize the consistency. You know, it's like yeah. the only reason that he did sort of like everything just blew up with the boom, boom, room is because of just like consistency, Absolutely. dedication. Like, and for me, like consistency is, has always kind of like been like a challenge because of shiny object syndrome <laughs> and just like, shiny you know, shi between syndrome. shiny object syndrome and also just like being like in my that. head, it's, it's hard to maintain consistency. So oh, consistency but, um, is key. But consistency yeah. is key. Consistency is, is, is one of, the, the main the only way you're going to survive is if you're going to be consistent if it's working on your breathing if right. it's internalizing your struggles if it's hosting a party That's if true. it's literally anything if you're inconsistent if you're doing one-offs and for this fucking podcast for example mm -hmm. if i were to if i were to just kind of have one off right. it wouldn't have the same Impact compound growth that I'm anything can have if you if you're consistent with it yeah. so i think everything from focusing on your breathing everything becomes second nature it becomes innate right with consistency with doing things like being able to balance DJing and hosting your own collective and focusing on the techno yoga club, but right. also focusing on the boom, boom room, mm -hmm. which is, you know, your, your boyfriend's collective, but mm -hmm. it's something that you're very much a part of. Yeah. So it's, it all starts here. Right. And you have the upper hand. 
Thank you. I'm happy for Thank it. you. Yeah. yeah. And kind of touching back on and what you said before we kind of move on to the next point of, um, you know, life, you know, you going through struggles throughout life. Um, struggle is very subjective. I mean, like yeah. you could, you know, deal with like a lot more challenging things like someone in a war torn country is obviously mm. going to be dealing with a lot more than, you know, someone that is living in America, for example, you know, but it's all subjective and it's like, you're all dealing with things in, in your own way, but just kind of remembering that, like, um, this kind of internal saying that like I'm trying to share with people yeah, struggle. Man, listen, yeah, listen, listen, motherfuckers, listen. <laughs> struggle <laughs> equals strength. Like if struggle you've struggled, strength. like you have, you know, if you've struggled and you've gotten through it, then like that has cultivated some type of like internal strength and resiliency in you. Yeah. And it's just a matter of like recognizing it, you know, and kind of like shifting your mindset from being in this position where, you know, maybe you're struggling a lot. Maybe you're going through a rough time and you're just like, keep getting hit over and over again. Yeah. Like what the hell universe, you it know? Yep. And it's just sort of realizing like, instead of thinking like, wow, like why is everything always so hard for me thinking like, wow, what a great opportunity for growth for me to be able to learn how to get out of this like yeah. situation, you know, for example. And um, just remembering too that the, um, I mean, this is a pretty common saying, but like the pathway to success is paved in failure, you mm -hmm. know, not really mm -hmm. feeling like, feeling like you failed, like you fail, you give up and you don't want to like try again. I mean, like we yeah. wouldn't have like, for you know, every yeah, anything. Out, anything in this room probably <laughs> exactly. like I mean the table's pretty basic but yeah. like any electronics like unless people just tried over and over again and it's like realizing like okay you never really fail you just learned one way that something doesn't work yeah you know there's a saying that it's, it's funny that you were to say that it's um you've survived your worst days yeah like you've survived exactly. the worst thing to ever happen to you you you're survived. still here <laughs> you're still here and you'll be all right and it's just it be it comes down to how you internalize anything and everything right. because you've had your worst days. I mean, you're obviously, hopefully you've gone through the worst of the worst in your life. Obviously yeah, everybody, I mean, it's, there's always going to be ups and downs, yeah, but for sure. it's, it's how you internalize. It. And I think if, if people have you to kind of, to kind of help people understand that, yes, this, this, this does happen. And yes, it's something that you're going to have to face and no, you shouldn't just think of the positive and no, you shouldn't just dismiss it right. and be happy with what you currently have, which of course right. you appreciate what you currently have and you, you can to some extent be happy with what you have, exactly. but also accept the fact that some things are going to suck. Right. Some things are, you're going to get hit by a fucking train right. some days. Exactly. You know? Exactly. But That's what it feels like. It sure. does. Yeah. Physically, mentally, yeah. you can almost start like, I, I think when you, you, you deal with something mentally, you physically feel that, oh, that yeah. anxiety and that tension and that, that stress. And that is just one whole fucking battle that you have to try to work yourself through a hundred percent i mean that's that's kind of like where all of the, the breathing techniques and the meditation and just even you know being um i need to do kind that. of like really yeah i mean that's why i've been telling people the breathing techniques because everybody's like i don't have time to meditate or go to yoga or yeah. do this or do that yeah. i'm like hey what is one thing that you're doing more than any other action like ever it's breathing, breathing. Yeah. yeah yeah but um but yeah in uh on my Instagram, I'm going to do like a kind of like wrap up post and I'm going to just like list like all the links. I'm going to do like a bunch of book recommendations because awesome. like another reason that I have kind of um, really grown so much and learned all of this personal development stuff. It's um, just like tons of podcasts, tons of books, uh, audio books and everything yeah. too. things on like psychology, uh, things about like uh, like attachment theory, uh, different love languages, mm. um, really any type of, uh, you know, kind of like business strategy book that also focuses on the kind of sociology, yeah. you know, Malcolm Gladwell is like really great as well. So just like learning really, um, whatever I can absorb from as many different people's experiences as I can. And kind of like collectively, it's like learning. I mean, we literally are at a time where like every, like the answer to any question yep. that you want is right here. So like in Absolutely. my mind, you know, there is like no excuse for not really taking control of your life and your situation yes. and just being like, okay, what can I do? And it's being able to like come from a place of acknowledgement and personal responsibility that like, sure, it's definitely unhealthy to think like all the time, oh, this is my fault. This is my fault. This is my fault. Yeah, that is not absolutely. healthy. But realizing like, okay, what could I do differently, you know, to not be in the same situation next time or to kind of like manage my feelings, you know, and it's, it's really, um, just kind of surrounding yourself with that. Like one of the ways yeah. that you can replace all that negative self-talk is by like, you know, a lot of times like that negative self-talk will exist unless I'm, you know, listening to like a podcast right. or like, you know, and now it's like easier because I'm not constantly in like the fight yeah. or flight mode yeah, from like yeah. breathing right and stuff. But, um, but I just, uh, you know, for example, with my YouTube, um, 
thing, mo- motivation marathon yeah, is what I'm calling that's right, it. Motivation marathon. I'm going to, um, I'm going to put that in like the notes as well, but I started curating YouTube playlists of like, you know, different like inspiring videos. So awesome. ones like girl power, like women who shape the world. And it's just a bunch of badass women oh, that are cool. just like, like that everything from like Madonna down to like a, a woman that does like Ted talks and stuff. Sure. And, um, Madonna. Yeah, like doing like women, uh, women who rock, which is one that I've done um, specific to the Athena Collective, where it's all like interviews of like you know Maya Jane Coles, Annie Mack, um, Lauren Losung, you know different like women artists, yeah. and just sort of um, between that and like you know Tony Robbins podcast or other self development leaders podcast, just constantly like replacing those negative thoughts with like other, you know, obviously more. Positive, positive ones. Yeah. I mean, it's just keeping, kind of like more insightful ones. It's keeping you know? yourself alert. It's keeping right. like dwelling is is i think the worst thing somebody can do and, and yeah. kind of marinating in the yeah. fact that you're having ne- it's yeah. Called, yeah. Oh, rumination man. is a it's, killer uh. and and giving the pl- like you it, it's it's all internal it yeah, is. that's all it is it's yeah. all internal and i think your your energy level is pouring out of you mm-hmm. you know what i mean that's what that's what i'm gathering because <laughs> you have all these projects but there's still more what right. what more can i do what right. what, what this youtube ch- this youtube channel is you don't have to do it. No, you know, no. you don't have to do it. I started just making playlists and I was like, I should share these. Yeah, so exactly. I just made names for them. Because it's, it's, <laughs> it's your way of, of, of taking what you've, you've dealt with and, and kind of giving it to, to other people. And again, to everybody yeah. that's listening, it's like, you're not the only person that's dealing with stuff exactly. like that. And that's okay. Like you, you have every right to kind of like feel some type of way about the, sh- the stuff that you're going through and, and yeah. don't dismiss it because yes, those that sucked. What right. happened to you fucking sucked. The things you're dealing with is not, is not fun, but <laughs> it's your job it's no one else's job to take care of you it's your job to kind of get yourself out of your your rut right when you're all alone who is the person that you're with are they your best friend or are they your enemy you know and like kind of um one thing that I was actually sharing with my roommate, um, Natalie, Red Five is actually my roommate too. No so kidding. she's on your she's podcast your too. Yeah, I she's didn't know that. Yeah, I How did you to, not um, tell me that, Nat? Yeah, when you well, were actually, here last. funny thing. <laughs> well, actually, we weren't, I don't think we were living together. We weren't living together when she was on your show, but we oh, actually wow. met at that Athena Collective panel that I did. Like, I met her there and then we just kind of became friends and stuff. But um, I was telling her that, oh, shit, I honestly forgot what I was going to say. Um, Red five. Now we were talking five. about internalizing it yeah. and getting yourself out of the rut when you're alone. Who's your best friend? Is right. Your best oh, friend yeah, your, your best friend. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like, is your best friend? You know, are you your best friend, or you know, are you your enemy? Because I was kind of sharing with her some of like my personal struggles, and it's like when you're in that headspace, are like, how are you talking to yourself? Mm-hmm. You know. And I told mm-hmm. her I was like, Yo, girl, like, it's it's been rough like getting through a lot of this stuff because one day I just sort of realized like how I was talking to myself in my head. Like if I would see, like look over to the other room and somebody was talking to like their daughter or their friend or their partner that way, I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're a monster. Like what? Like, no, like I'm going to stand up and say something. But then somehow it's okay to talk to yourself like that, you know? So Because you feel like you're in control of your thoughts. So if you talk to yourself that way, you're like, "Ah, I'm just being hard on myself or I'm just, it's, it's, it's hard to see yourself as somebody else other than yourself. Right. So exactly. it's, it's hard. It, I, I totally understand both sides of the coin. Like I understand where you're coming from, right. like being able to, to put yourself in, Hey, right now, how I'm talking to myself is not okay. I should right. not be talking to myself like that. But me, if I do something shitty and I, and I do feel some type of way about myself, I feel like I'm the, I'm my biggest critic. Right. So if anyone's going to give me shit for it, it should be me. Exactly. But at the same time, it's like, how do you combat that? How do you talk to the person that's that's right. giving you the most criticism and it's you? Yeah. And I mean, it kind of just goes back to learning, you know, the different separations of like, you know, is this like my ego talking and like the anxiety mm-hmm. of like me trying to, you know, protect like and preserve my ego and like feeling of security. And is this like anxiety or um kind of defensiveness when someone's like oh hey maybe you could do that differently but it's like oh like you get like defensive and scared or you know whatever and it's just sort of like learning to recognize I need to kind of like think about that marinate on that more like you know how do you identify Hmm. you know those different types of thoughts but another thing that I wanted to even touch on too is like even with you know wanting to like one of my like deepest aspirations is like you know getting into like being like a mindset coach or an empowerment coach or like like, basically different forms of life coaching you're on your fucking way you're you're gonna (laughs) kill it (laughs) well it's something that I actually never really thought about but I I would be at like one of the reasons that I would love after parties so much is you would actually get to talk to people and I would like Hmm. like what's going on with you and I would talk I would share you know 
like just whatever insightful things I had based on you know somebody's experience and they're like do you do this and I'm like no like you know but one of the the things I lo love to put out there is that you know I, I don't like by any means am saying that like I know everything right. like we are right, until right. the day we die we are learning we are growing you know it's a constant process of evolution Absolutely. but I think like one of the the things that I want to sort of instill in people is that like listen like you actually have all of the things that like you need like you just have to sort of like the only thing that i would be kind of be doing like from like a coaching perspective is just kind of help helping people clear off the bullshit a little yeah, bit like yeah, like yeah. shed the layers of bullshit internally you you know have everything that you need like you are you on yeah. the inside it's just learning kind of different strategies to sort of tune into the right frequency right, you know right, get rid exactly. of all of the extra static and find like a signal that's clear yeah. you know you're like the preferred version of a therapist. <laughs> you're like, the, because it's, it's, it's essentially you're helping people. You're helping I see people. a therapist too. You're, hel you're helping. Yeah, you absolutely. Yeah. Be comfortable <laughs> for sure. That's the, the negative stigma on that is garbage oh, and it's bullshit. 100%. But you, again, I think you would do great at it. And I, oh, and I hope you, you do get to a point where you do kind of, find the balance with again tr you're gonna right. have to trim the fat on some oh, of the stuff you're doing yourself trust me right i'm telling well, it's you all it's all about come delegation natural. really it is. it's like finding it people that want to kind of take on certain roles yeah. of the project yeah and, um and finding kind of uh, ways to kind of integrate everything yeah. you know it's i mean that that's a whole nother story i right. think because finding people <laughs> you trust in, because delegating yeah. i think anyone can just say like okay you do this you do right, this you right, do this right, but right. it's like you have to trust the person that you're delegating said task to because it's still going to be representative of what your exactly. vision is you know so exactly. is, 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 yeah from a creative we can talk for hours about all that yeah from a creative <laughs> aspect good luck but <laughs> i think you helping someone trim the fat on their their again clearing the static and kind of focusing on what they should be focusing on to help right. them get this out of them is is what we need more in this in the scene and in the industry, whether it has to do with house music or not, oh, but just 100%. in general, I think, I don't know if it has to do with, you know, the heavy drug and alcohol use that people kind of get stuck oh, in yeah. these things. Yeah. And I, I don't want to have to go there, but I mean, that's definitely part of it. I yeah. mean, for sure. Yeah. Like well, manage yourself guys. Like, it's like, I actually stopped drinking for the most part. I had like three white claws last night. <laughs> like, the first time I've had more than one drink in like, honestly, like ages. Yeah. And I was like, I felt like such a, like wimp because i'm like man how do i White feel these strong. right now i mean they're five percent but like <laughs> i was like what the hell but yeah i actually kind of really cut back on like drinking alcohol and also you know doing other substances at parties it's like i'll definitely still indulge but like there it's very hard for me to stop once i start mm. like for me you know like nightly like it's not like a day-to-day -day right, thing right, but like course. in a given night I like once not. i start yeah. doing something it's like whether it's drinking or anything else it's it's hard for me to kind of like put a stop on right that. and i kind of realized that it was starting to really detract from like my experience experience like a like yep. I could never do it like before DJing because it would just like totally like throw me off and I make me imagine. in my head but you know just not being able to feel present in a conversation because I'm thinking like oh man like mm -hmm. I want to mm -hmm. get another drink or mm -hmm. do something mm -hmm. else you know what I mean mm -hmm. and it's um it's really important to kind of like recognize like okay what is serving me and what what do I want to put out into the world and what do I want to um you know kind of like receive from other people yeah and it's hard to do that if you're like constantly fucked up absolutely <laughs> I mean for me I'm I'm an old man I'm always I'm always tired even at my own shows like you'll just I I don't I don't party like I used to, I don't know if it's because I got it out of my system when I was younger doing festivals and Coachella's and stuff. And I was like, you know, 17, 18, 19, and I kind of did everything right, right, and right. I got it out <laughs> of the way. So now I just see people and their experiences aren't the same. They're not, they're, you're right. not going to really get the most out of something when you're putting yourself in an altered state. But the reason you're putting yourself in an altered state is because you're going to something that you're trying to get right you know have you're some fun at it and you're just like it's it's per, it's self -perpet. anyway right. this talk can go on no, four know, hours 100%. for sure but um you just got your new website up yeah yeah Let's so um so it's just christina leo mm -hmm. and um you know in terms of like in instagrams on there facebook uh or not I, th I think i put my facebook page on there but i'm really focusing more on instagram like the youtube channel soundcloud is on there and stuff as well is this the heart um, of the the symbiotic relationship you're trying to get with the yeah, Athena collective yeah. you just put it to where trying to just sort of like be more okay with me putting myself out there like as a brand and even using you know kind of moving more towards using christina leo rosa for everything yeah. than christina rose and honestly mm. like the reason being um is honestly like 
like search rankings on Google, believe it or not. Search rankings. Yeah. So okay. like if you type in like Christina Rose, like you're going to get like a, a whole bunch of other people. Sure. If you type in like Christina Leo Rosa, like it's literally just me for like the first like three pages. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, um, but kind of uh, starting to kind of feed everything like through, you know, my own personal brand, if, yeah, if you will. As you should. And that's definitely something that's, you know, been a little bit uncomfortable, but you know, I, like you said, you got to be getting comfortable with being uncomfortable mm-hmm. because that's the only way that you're going to like grow and, and yeah. progress and succeed and yeah. stuff. But you know, on there I have, you know, I have the podcast that I was like, you know, going to be on there tonight. I have like some upcoming events. Like I have, um, a few agents that I've been working with like over the past couple of months. So I've been getting some more like kind of residency gigs. Nice. I play like regularly in San Diego at this uh, place called the VA hospital casino Fiesta and then i just casino. the Fiesta, and then i Got just it. uh dj'd <laughs> at this really beautiful hotel called the pendry in san diego i know that one last night yeah. so or uh friday night rather so um yeah just kind of a place to you know have like different upcoming events because i have way too many social media channels so i'm like the yeah. website is a nice place to just and it's like simple as hell i mean it's really just like you one just pager. centralize everything yeah, yeah just kind of centralize everything with like the projects there and um you know anything else is kind of like through the instagram but even just sort of managing all of those promotional details through my own you know personal instagram and then kind of like having some backup channels for for other stuff but it's a yeah. it's a lot though i mean yeah. i totally like i know that i i have too many interests and i take on like so many things but that's why i'm like okay how can each project support Absolutely. you know each other and stuff that's i mean that again i i love the fact that you're i'm not the only person that's like this like i try to do so much and everything kind of has to make sense with right. the other <laughs> so that i'm not killing myself mm-hmm. internally you know what i mean so exactly. the fact i mean I, I think it is still gonna there's there's it's never ending process it's not like this something that you're just gonna figure out no. obviously but i think you're gonna have to kind of work on trimming the fat in some places oh, and putting shifting focus into others so on that, what do you think, like, where is, is the main focus mm-hmm. moving forward for you? Cause I think you yeah. individually as Christina Leo Rosa, mm-hmm. in my opinion, should be the focus. Oh, thank you. You know, aside, thank because you. as much as you want to take care of everybody else, <laughs> you're the most important. Right. Yeah. No, I know. It's so, it's so hard for me to even feel that way. I mean, cause like my <laughs> longest running desire you know, like even taking like all of my careers and, you know, I, I ran like wedding photography company for a while too, which was like, you know, working really closely with people on like the most important day of yeah, their lives. I'm yeah, not sure yeah. if I agree with it as being the <laughs> most important day of right. people's lives anymore. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just like being there for people and wanting to help people has always been like the longest running, yeah. um, theme in my life. Yeah. So, you know, even through doing things, I mean, like you look at, you know, super, super successful people obviously they they have other people delegating right. working for them and right, helping right, kind right. of the, with these projects so um it's really hard to say because it's like you know with techno yoga club for example i mean that's something where you know it, even if it's like a couple times a year it's something where it is you know it's definitely for me too i'm like i'd love yeah. to do some yoga listening to techno i'm for <laughs> sure um and that's kind of like helping like with uh you know, maintaining what, like what makes me happy, honestly, what brings me the most joy is literally like just putting what I've learned out there, just out there. And if people want to learn from it, if they want to try it and see if it works for them, like awesome. It's, you know, I'm sure that like everything that I've done for myself might not work for everyone, but it's just kind of a matter of like, you know, getting back on the horse and trying again. It's like, you know, some people are like, oh, you know, well, like I tried meditating and I can, or I tried breathing techniques and I can't. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, you can't do anything. Like if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. Like you have to just kind of get back on the horse and just keep keep riding and try try again. again. Like it's like you will get there. It's just you have to have, um, you know, you have to want it. You have to want it. Yeah. A lot of people say they want to be able to. They. I wish I could do yoga, but what are you doing to try to do yoga? Really? When's the last time you decided to stretch and? I mean, even me, I just do stretches like in the morning or something. Like I, I don't go to many. You like I have a yoga membership at this place, but it's like I'll, I'll go like maybe like once a week or something. But then the rest of the time, I'm. You know, yeah, you're doing it on my own. Yeah, but that's because <laughs> you want it. Right. Okay. What did we miss anything? Is there anything um, that you wanted to touch on? I mean, I guess, uh, you know, I'll just kind of uh, do do a little quick plugs here. I mean, yeah, next up, um, next DJ set is uh, at the Boom Boom Room, December 20th. Christmas it's party. our Christmas party yes, or our yeah. holiday party. We like to call it the Xmas party, party to kind of, you know, be leave it a bit more open right. to everyone. And um, yeah, that's going to be really awesome. Um, it's the my first time back at the boom boom room like in a couple of shows because there's mm-hmm. so many people that want to play like we've been trying to kind of like open it up to more people yep. but um that's just at tbbr.la you can find out all the info there and then um pattern bar actually i just got a gig at pattern oh, bar nice. for like january 27th it'll be i think the i think the first time i'm playing there i don't remember uh playing there before and yeah i would say um 
you know, in terms of any other projects, anything that I've mentioned tonight, any uh, questions or, you know, just to kind of keep tabs on everything that I'm doing, because, yeah. you know, you're right, I'm, <laughs> I have way too many projects. <laughs> um, but just going to uh, Christina Leo Rosa DJ, like at Christina Leo Rosa DJ on Instagram. And then that's where I'm going to be kind of like putting sort of everything so you can find Perfect. everything through there. But I just wanted to thank you, Jade, for doing this. Of I mean, course. it's really amazing. Like I actually have been listening to podcasts for about like six years now, like of usually entrepreneurial business mm -hmm, podcasts mm -hmm. and stuff. But um, this is one of the first podcasts like in the underground, like in the music scene that I've ever seen and I think it's really important and I know you want the focus to be on your guests I but I just want to throw the focus back on you <laughs> oh, for a hot second you. and say thank you because it's something that's like really necessary and not I don't know I, I feel like not everybody would have the insight that you know a lot of your guests are bringing to the table right. because everybody sees people they have this whole sort of perception mm -hmm. about what this person's mm -hmm. like or what they're about but being able to kind of go you know behind the veil a bit and get some of that insight it's inspiring and it really helps people and you know you're just doing this well, like you. labor of love so yeah. that's all my projects are labor lo of yes. loves too right now so well, i yeah, appreciate dad, it yeah that's for sure <laughs> thanks i mean I've, I've, been, I've done this enough years like being involved in the industry that i've, I've met people and I, I go to enough shows and I, I have friends obviously that go to enough shows mm -hmm. and you see the DJ enough times on the lineup you see the DJ performing hey right. hi hug okay go get your drink I'll get everyone's kind of fucked up but it, to, to pull the veil back and to have someone sit down for an hour and you get to, to hopefully listen to some you know someone that's a friend of yours and you're like oh I didn't think that right. they thought that way I never get to talk to them like that so right. that's I just again this is not about I just want it to be on the people who have something to say so if anybody wants to come on yeah let me know message and me and we'll make it work uh, you know social media really glamorizes things and stuff yeah. so kind of just like you know even i'm sure it probably comes as a surprise to some people that i even talked about things like anxiety mm -hmm. or having these like negative feelings i've been more vocal about it on social media lately but i mean it's uh it's easy to think that like somebody just totally has it like going on and is killing it when you right. don't actually know like, right. what's going on inside so share your feelings people talk about them it's good yes it's healthy it feels that. good feels good makes you feel good makes me feel good yeah. and i'm glad you came on thank, thank you, you for so your much time, of course. thank you guys for tuning in the block is hot <laughs>